students. Welcome to Online Intro to Ethics Theory and Application. My name is Eric Doak. I'll be your instructor for this course. Uh, a couple things to begin with. A little introduction video, if you will. Um, make sure you read the syllabus from the get, like right away. We'll, I'll have a Padlet posted where you'll have to post some insight from it. But the syllabus really explains the arc of the class and goes into ways in which online classes differentiate and are different than face-to-face -face classes. Uh, there's a myriad of ways, but uh, one way of thinking about it is that I'm going to try to break up your time in this class into three parts. Part of it will be instructor-student interaction, part of it will be uh, material and resources and student interaction, and part of it will be student-to-student -student interaction. So this is a philosophy class where a lot of it will be in discussion mode, which is difficult because we're not in the same room. It's uh, asynchronous. We don't all take at the same time. Some people, everyone's got different schedules, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we'll be using a lot of uh, wikis, discussion boards, padlets, write-ups, uh, video postings, or at least audio for those of us uh, who are comfortable. And... When we post online, it because you know many of you have heard this, some eighty percent of communication is nonverbal, and so we don't really get it all conveyed, and things can get misinterpreted. So I really urge you to read closely. I know most of us don't actually read the syllabus; we immediately jump to grading and what the requirements are. Uh, but this is an important one because while I'll be pretty accommodating on some things, other things I draw a pretty hard and fast line, which uh, you know we'll see as the semester goes on. But extreme emphasis, you know, for instance, when you're going to be funny, and often I crack jokes in face-to-face -face classes, we'll see how it goes this semester. Uh, you just have to like keep a, on a governor, especially in an online setting, because there's so much room for misinterpretation, and if you haven't noticed, uh, tensions are pretty hot in America these days. Um, and this class will be touching upon some of the most sensitive issues, right, uh, that face us. Nature of right and wrong, true and false. Um, there's not much that isn't included in differentiations between right and wrong, true and false. Anything you care about has those factors at play. Uh, that said, we will have a great semester. I like this class a lot. Uh, you have one textbook that you should already have called Ethical Choices by Richard Berner and Yvonne Raley. Raley? I don't know. It's an excellent book. Uh, they've now mandated our textbooks, but this is a good one. This is the second edition. Um, don't go to the bookstore uh, if you can find a better source, unfortunately. I wish I could say otherwise, but lots of good sources out there. Still, it's pretty cheap even if you do buy it new, and I mean, it really isn't a horrible, t it's definitely textbook, textbook, but like, it's not a horrible textbook, so you may draw on it in the future. It's got lots of case studies, excellent things, but get this right away. Uh, I probably will be assigning chapters from the get-go, although a lot of the emphasis in the first couple classes is on some ancient Greek stuff, some Plato, uh, if you don't know what that is, you certainly will soon. Uh, what else do I need to mention about this? All of my contact info is on the syllabus. Um, emailing, I'll try to e respond within 48 hours. Uh, if it's a real emergency, text message me. I don't really answer calls from strangers just because I value my, my life. Um, that sounded weird. I recognize that. Anyway, you feel me. Besides that, this class is a strong lean on developing your faculties for thinking. I will say more than once that I care little about what your conclusions are, but I'm very interested in your reasoning. Right? All the theories I'll present to you, I really don't care if you believe them, but one, so this is the this, this system. Every time we encounter a new idea, it's one, what is it saying, right? Do we understand what the author is saying? And then two, do we agree with it or disagree with it and why, right? Uh, and so really, uh, there's a famous quote that always gets misattributed to Aristotle. We don't actually know who says it, but it goes, 
The mark of an educated mind is the ability to entertain an idea without believing in it, right? And more and more, uh, people are having difficulty, I'm gonna make a generalization, people are having difficulty entertaining ideas that they vehemently disagree with, right? They just think it's a repulsive idea. Uh, but there's a very ancient and old idea uh, that says you cannot hate what you understand, right? And that evil is truly ignorance. And if you really knew what a person was doing and where they're coming from, you wouldn't hate them, right? Because most people only act out of evil or do malicious things out of ignorance because they don't actually know better. They don't know the way the world works and how things accumulate, right? Now, I will certainly offer ideas that challenge this. I will make good cases. And if you're coming into this class, very armchairish ethics is a pseudoscience, a soft science, maybe you're right. But I will make the case early on for actually why it's better to be a bad person. Right? Now you say, what is this? Well, yeah, like, you know, I'm gonna hook, I'm gonna bait the hook for this class, right? Because I'm gonna make the case for actually being a bad person. And if you decide that there's not a reason to do the right thing, you know, you have to decide, right? Ethics is all about figuring out what the right thing to do is, well, why do the right thing if you don't get the perks of it, or if it doesn't squit with you? So you might decide that you actually don't want to do the right thing. You just want to look like you do the right thing. And so we will actually look at the case for being a bad person, but looking like a good person. For they've shown that ethics classes often make people less ethical, more immoral, as they say. Uh, and that could happen, right? You might decide that I actually don't care about doing the right thing, I just want to look like I'm doing the right thing. That my class will help you become more manipulative, more diabolical, more, you know. But, if after I've made the devil's argument, right, or made Plato's devil's advocate argument, uh, you decide you do want to do the right thing, that there is inherent value and extraneous value in doing the right thing, well, you still have all your work ahead of you. You still have to figure out what the right thing to do is. And we will be, I will be presenting you with dozens of real life examples and case studies. And what we'll be doing is doing ethics. And every time we do ethics, we're trying, we're attempting to resolve conflicting, contradictory values and obligations. Yeah. And again, I do not care so much what your conclusions are, right? But what your reasoning is and how consistent it is. Uh, for human thinking is prone to error, and we need a standard to measure it against. You might say this is the beginning of philosophy, right? So, let's wrap this video up, shall we? I'll try not to ramble. Uh, every week, we will be doing a combination of readings, videos, discussion boards, and you'll have a weekly one-page write-up. Now, I care more about content than style and format, and I like length over brevity. So if you're spitting and spitting and really bringing it, you're good. It'll be credit, no credit. A lot of these things will be credit, no credit. Uh, the tests will not be credit, no credit. However, um, you'll be able to use your book, and you'll do them in the comfort of your own home, uh, and that'll be nice. Uh, that's a brief overview. I could be forgetting something. I'll post in the next video. I urge you to hang in there. If you find the first two weeks or so dealing with Plato, difficult, just hang in there. If by the time we're through it, very, most of you will find that when you read it, you'll be like, WTF, I don't understand what this, you know, this doesn't make sense to me, this is strange. And uh, if I haven't explained it adequately to you by the end of it, then like, you know, it's on me. And so you should email me, be like, hey, I don't get it, like you need to pull, you know, carry, you know, no bad followers, only bad leaders. Uh, and I'll make sure it's adequately explained, but I think it will be by the end of it, because, uh, and we'll see how powerful it is and why it's important. Um, so, with that caveat, hang in there for the first two weeks. After that, as you'll see in the book, this is a very easy to read book, uh, and we'll f supplement it with plenty of materials. So, I look forward to meeting you. Uh, make sure you start with Start Here. It'll be a weekly, weekly modules, one through probably 15 or 16. I think we have a spring break in here, uh, and let's get going, all right.